Whenever you're ready, we can go ahead and begin. I'm ready. Good. How much can I push the human? How much can I consciously evolve the human body to do more, to do it better, to do it faster, to do it stronger? I just want to see how far I can push the human. Hi, my name is Tim Cannon. Uh, I've been working on a uh, small project uh, with my friend Sean Sarver here. Uh, my name is Sean Sarver. I'm a cybernetics engineer by uh, Lunt. I am a barber by trade. Uh, I want to see if I can't make the human uh, evolve faster than what nature has allowed it to be. You know, I say I've wanted to be a robot since I was a little boy, you know what I mean? And it's true, I've wanted to be a robot since I was a little boy and it looks like I'm getting close. We have two separate power supplies, one going to this solenoid electromagnetic coil that's wrapped around my finger. Embedded in my finger is a neodymium magnet. I have a little magnet implanted in my pinky and I've had it for almost three years now. I was alerted to uh, a discussion and it basically says any kind of electromagnetic field, you'll be able to feel it. And I just thought, oh my goodness, how awesome would it be to see something, in, to know the physical shape of something invisible to the naked eye. Sorry, I was out back. I live with my uh, parents uh, still. <laughs> I just live in the basement. I moved back in 2008 when I got out of the Air Force. I was an enlistee of the United States Air Force for six years. That's how I got a lot of the electronics grounding. Because um, to do that, the Air Force sent me to a qualifier course called Electronic Principles. I got a two-year degree uh, in associates in um, software applications programming. When it comes to where I get the, the majority of my information, it just ends up being Google, Wikipedia, and then YouTube. I've worked in piercing and tattoo industry for a few years prior to this. After I was done in the military, I'd kind of had like uh, a handful of uh, emotional issues and some stress issues, where I was just kind of like a non-functioning civilian. I was just like, I. I can't do this, I can't do that anymore. That was like frying my brain. Come on, let's go, you jerk. This is kind of like an intellectual exercise it started out as. We're doing another video here for you. It's just another demo. All right, here we go, test one. This is a device built by cyborgs for cyborgs. Just put my finger. We've uh, secretly placed a box in front of Tim while he was blindfolded. This is our first stab at making something that's truly useful that is solely meant to interact with people who have implants. We're going to continue to try to bring you uh, the craziest shit you've ever seen in your life. I think we both realized right there, there was like, this is what I'd rather be doing with all of my time. My name's Tim Cannon. And I'm Sean Sarver. We are the development team for Grindhouse Wetwares. Here, I'll come down and show you the lab. Well, the lab. The basement. <laughs> yeah, the basement. Let's take a look here. Um, we also built a transcranial direct stimulation device. It electrocutes your brain. You like this. All right, here we go. You ready to get your brains out, buddy? Yeah, I'm ready. Don't know how into biohacking you are, but this would be like your first biohack. Yeah, first yeah. grind, first grind. You Does know, that ever give you like a twitch? Yeah, you'll get okay. it. Yep, you'll get that. All right, just uh, get ready. You're going to feel the light. Okay, so mostly they call me a biohacker. Uh, this is experimentation on the lowest of low budgets. Anything can be used to stimulate nerves, provided that it's subdermal and it gives off the correct current. Uh, you, you can't really go wrong. I saw a couple of talks. One was by uh, Left Anonym, one was by a guy named Kevin Warwick. The one by Kevin Warwick was a really incredible display of what was possible. This is the sort of implants you could try yourself. Kevin Warwick, he's the uh, only professor of cybernetics in the world. He's uh, based out of England. He implanted a chip with 100 pins on, the, on a trunk nerve of his arm. And then he was able to, across the ocean, right, maneuver this hand over the internet. Guy's wife gets one, and they do this experiment where she starts to move her hand and he can, 
he can feel it in his mirrored hand. Now, I know that maybe this is uh, on, on, the, on the verge of fetishism, but that's about the most intimate thing I can think of on the planet to actually truly know what somebody's feeling like. Some of you feel quite bored being a human, quite limited in what you can do. Uh, particularly your brain doesn't perform how it should. So what are the possibilities of an upgrade? Fundamentally, devices stimulate nerves. All they need to do to do that is to give off a current. Anything that gives off a current and is safe inside your body can be used as a subdural device. Uh, given some pain. I think left anonym was always a little bit disturbed, you know what I mean? Like, I definitely think she probably had a couple, couple of screws loose or maybe had too many drinks when she was doing some of these things because to think that you could put metal in your body without it having a bad reaction is probably, probably a little foolish. So I sat down in my kitchen with a vegetable peeler, I shit you not, and I decided to put things in my hands. <laughs> She's clearly insane. She's not like... Like, I'm not going to like, like lie and state like we're like scientists and stuff, but we do try to apply like the scientific method, like come up with a hypothesis, test it, find the results. I mean, she's just doing crazy, insane shit. The first time I ever sat down, it went horribly, horribly wrong. Uh, the whole thing went septic, and I put myself in the hospital for two weeks. There's this, like the self-destructive aesthetic quality about it, but I wouldn't say that's like the head for everyone. A lot of people really, um go a lot deeper into it than I guess I do. For me, it was something I read about that just interested me deeply and it's something that kind of just like sat in the back of my mind and that I just thought it would be really interesting to be able to experience this world that nobody else could. I now have a digital input channel and once you have that, you really have the beginning of the first computer interfaces in these very natural ways. You pretty much have two ways to go. There's the medical field and then there's the piercers. And frankly, the piercers are just much more willing to talk about it. It's been a lot of just people talking about various uh, procedures that they want to do and how they would go about doing them and then giving it a try. And sometimes that's scary and sometimes it works out. We're on our way into Pittsburgh proper. Uh, we're going to hot rod piercings. I'm gonna get a tiny rare earth metal implanted in my ring finger. It's gonna give me a sixth sense, the ability to feel electromagnetic fields. You have all of these colleges here, some of them specializing in things like, you know, robotics and artificial intelligence and deep computer stuff. Some of them focusing on medicine. For a while, the city was dying, and so you have this kind of element of kind of anti-authority, freaks are welcome, kind of, you know, angry, pissed off youth kind of vibe going on. You know, no shortage of freaks here, and that's, the, that's great. And so when you have technology and uh, biomedical research and a pissed off, angry population that loves tattoos converging together, this is bound to happen. And why Pittsburgh? It's got the right amount of fuck you. I guess you're getting one, right? Yeah. And then you're getting one, right? Yeah! Awesome. Um, I mean, you went to Magnet Sit, like, right around there? Uh, yeah, right around there. The line's where the incision goes, the circle's where the magnet's gonna end up. Nice. Whenever you're ready, we can go ahead and begin. I'm ready. You good? Okay. So I'm gonna put a good amount of pressure on your finger here. And I'm gonna go ahead and take a nice deep breath in for me. And let that out. And just keep on blowing that out. I believe there are some, there would be people who would state that the um, piercer who does the magnet implants and people, and people do mind modification are technically committing assault on you. Going the DYI route is like you're obviously circumnavigating like the government agencies that would be in, normally involved in a project like that, like, like the FDA, is it approved? It's like a legal gray area where it's, I have that kind of control over what I do with my body, but there are laws on books that could be read in a manner that would state that I don't have that freedom and liberty. And, if you would like, we can experience your first little magnetic trick. Sure. Come down and... 
Oh, that is so cool. <laughs> that is awesome and totally worth all of the little bit of pain that that was. Nice. Hell yeah, man. So Beast. we'll just clean you up and bandage you up and uh, yeah, you'll be good to go. Awesome. Go ahead and take a nice deep breath in for me and let that out. Feels really warm, all that blood. It's nice and warm. This is it. Keep the breathing. Just keep up it here. Just nice keep and deep. Steady the whole time. It's like a 400% increase in cyborg yeah, population in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh cyborg community is growing faster That's than any wild. cyborg community in the world. Tomorrow, Cobra, the CEO, will be in the loop to talk earnings and the state of the housing market. Honey, what day is it? You've got to be kidding me. Get your truly free credit score at creditkarma.com. There's just too much noise, too much information. Society is definitely changing and evolving, and there might be a time when Procedures such as this, implants, are a lot more mainstream. In order for that to happen, um, the procedure for getting these done needs to be um, also advanced a lot more because going to somebody and having them cut open your finger and put something in is still going to make a lot of people cringe and make a lot of people seem that it's not worth it. People can't understand because it's so simple and small, but it adds such a layer of richness in, in data that uh, you know, to not do it seems insane to me. It's so one nice thing I do like about being a barber. It's like I can talk about this stuff to regular people. I can hear like their thoughts and feelings on it. And they think it's all possible, it's all real, it's all almost here. It's like 10, 15 years away. And it's just like, it's not that far away. It doesn't have to be that far away. I view it as kind of taking the pain for the people who are going to come after me, want, you know, you take the pain now, we're paying now so that it will become socially acceptable later. Companies, you know, mega corporations that can actually bring this stuff to market because they can pay to get through the red tape and pay to get through the bureaucracy, they're going to get that money back in spades. Tim and I don't imagine we'd be the only people making cyber, even for the most successful we could possibly imagine. We want to be the only company. There's going to be someone out there who's like, I have eight billion dollars to spend on this. Nobody's gonna want to get surgeries for that stuff. A, they will or they'll be left behind. They have no choice. You know what I mean? Do you want to be obsolete? I want to make myself faster. Not so I have my better killing machine. I just want to be faster. Like, fuck cheetahs. Why should they be the fastest thing? I'm curious to see if it is possible to consciously push human evolution to a post-human being. Right. Me you know, I'm curious to see if that is possible. I want to see if I can do that. Right. If I'm capable of doing that. Right. <laughs> <laughs>